This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. fellow investigators and welcome to our video podcast into the darkness where my friends and i are playing the call of cthulhu role-playing game i'm your host tom Rayley. the scenario is called controlled burn it was written by nathan decker who is also our keeper of arcane lore and this is a one shot so without any further delay let's begin our journey into the darkness nathan all right the scenario begins on a small airfield outside of Grangeville, Idaho. It has a a kind of rustic-looking building next to it that group of you are stationed at at the moment. You are all smoke jumpers who are prepared for uh, basically firefighting in the far reaches of the forest. If an alarm goes off, you all rush to the plane, you get in, you go to where the fire is, and they kick you out with a parachute, and you start to assess what's going on in the area. And would you believe it? The alarm is going off. You hear the siren clacks and going, and there is a rush to the locker room, such as it is with uh, all sorts of great little cubbies that just have parachutes, outfits, the whole shebang. You basically are going to arbor up with face grills, high collar suits that are made of Kevlar, because you're jumping near a fire, not into a fire, but near it. So let's talk about our smoke jumpers as they are rushing into this locker room. Who is first off the dock? I'll be first. Uh, My name is Nick Dobbs. I've been doing this uh, on and off for the last uh, four years. Uh, So far, I've come close in a couple of times to getting seriously injured, but no luck's been with me so far uh i'm unmarried i'm 26 uh and uh i know my stuff i guess all right yeah you start gearing in clipping up who's next in the room uh probably me i'd probably be uh making sure everything's like equipment checking and everything and then uh whenever it goes off i'm like oh crap you know making sure everything's cleared and for doorways and then i go and strap on start getting ready mm-hmm. excellent yeah you can see nick's got ahead of you so you actually are double checking his back as you go that's something you do when you're running through this as you're watching out for your teammates uh next up how about franklin i, I forget too are you is a rule never pack your own parachute? Um, somebody so packs it. Someone usually you. packs it for you. And yeah, you just usually double check it too. Yeah, you like check yours and then someone verify because you usually have a check officer, right? Or whoever volunteer check officer that day. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, uh, Franklin, uh, Franklin Maison, uh, originally from uh, from Montreal, but uh, immigrated to the United States about uh, 15 years ago. Uh, he's uh, 30 years of age, uh, and he's kind of been uh, originally had worked up in the um, up in um, um, up in Canada, and then down here now in the uh, in the U.S. Uh, kind of not a very tall individual, but a very stocky individual. Uh, so he's kind of short, low to the ground, kind of dwarfish, I guess, in that respect. Uh, he does uh, has gotten into some scraps before, uh, and so he does have some scars and things on his back uh, to kind of uh, uh, to show that. So, Ooh, real tough guy. I like it. Uh, sp- speaking of what I can only assume is a tough guy, Buck Bronco. Yeah, uh, I'm probably going to be giving Jackson Meeker the predator handshake as we get ready to go out. And um, I'm like a probably like six, five, big, muscly bodybuilder looking guy with a 
beautiful fireman mustache and some light hair, uh, not too long. And he looks ready. He's, he's jazz. He's consci- He's a daredevil, but he's a conscientious daredevil. This is the perfect job for that because you need to make sure you know what you're doing when you're jumping out of planes. And uh, the recipient of the Predator handshake, Jackson. Name's Jackson Meeker. Um, I'm uh, the uh, only male child of a large family from South Dakota. Uh, spent a lot of my childhood in the woods. I don't talk very much. I'm a little bigger than medium, real wiry, tough kind of guy. Um, Weekends or days off, I sometimes play a little baseball because it's a nice quiet sport where everybody stands far apart from everybody else. Excellent. Well, this is not a chance for you to stand too far apart from people as you are pretty much in and out of the locker room and you are in the air within 15 minutes. You're all suited up. You're slamming down your little grill cages. Um, All of your suits have high collars to help with tree branches, grills to help with tree branches. You know that when you're going into the Idaho wilderness, there's a decent chance you're going to hit a tree on the way down. So just in case you need to be safe. On the way up, your spotter, uh, who is, or yeah, a signalman, they call them, uh, Freddy, is uh, kind of filling you in on what's going on. And uh, he's, uh, uh, so, okay, guys, uh, I got some aerial footage here. If you uh, if you look, I put it um, in our Discord group that we all share, <laughs> apparently. Um, yeah, uh what we've got here is there is a, a a kind of a small fire that is well small it's a few acres big but it's spreading um we need to get some people out on the ground it's a little uh, a little south of the swing set park uh and he relays it it's part of a bigger park structure uh but basically middle of nowhere um we're going to drop you out down here at this peak at the uh, Larkin's Peak. Uh, that should give you a good idea of where this thing is going. It's not moving particularly fast, so you should be good for a little bit, but you're only about a mile out, so don't stick around too long. If the you know if the wind picks up, wildfires can really get going pretty fast. Um, I've marked on your map um, a line that we might try and do that might slow it down if we could you know, put a fire break there, uh, cut down some trees, that sort of thing. Um, and he picks a couple of crates that are next to him. And uh, I'll be sending down the chainsaws and the other kind of equipment. Uh, all of you kind of know this uh, ahead of time as you don't jump with chainsaws, as cool as that would be. You generally jump land and then someone spots and helps the plane drop off these uh, crates. So he's showing you three separate crates that these items are in. Uh, Exfiltration, such as it is, uh, if you look on the map, I've noted that three miles away, there is a trailhead and a surveyor's lookout there. Uh, There's not a surveyor at the time. They sometimes actually rent out that area to people to stay at. So don't assume that anyone's actually going to be there to help. But that's a good way to find a way out if you need it. Um, Freddie, are there any um, known uh, water sources or creeks or anything we can use to... Yeah, um, if you look down here, there's a few lakes and rivers kind of on your way. We'll be sending some pumps down with you, some mobile pumps that you can use uh, as you go. Um, Some of those lakes are named, most aren't really. So do your best. Those will be coming down with you. Um, Might make sense to hose down some of the area if you can get around to it. Maybe the creeks will provide some slowdown to it. Uh, what time of year is it? And what time of day? Uh, 
we're going to say it's about uh, in terms of year, it's about right now, uh, early spring, kind of, yeah, it's the season good. for this, yeah. Uh, there's some uh, damp, dampness that... Yeah, there's a little, little dampness, slower. yeah, which is probably why uh, wildfires can really spread quickly, where a mile might not even be enough, so that's part of why he's hopeful that it'll kind of stay slow. Well, if it was uh, but, August, uh, we'd be in trouble. Yeah, and... Uh, in terms of uh, time of the day, it's actually uh, evening. You're going to be running out of light in a few hours. So you've all got uh, flashlights uh, on the, the helmet sort of feel, um, or rather on the helmets you'll wear on the ground because you have your uh, kind of great masks for the jump. Um, right. Questions? Um, the... the... Uh, the parachutes that we use are they the wingy ones that you can you guide them to yeah. get in okay yes yeah, so. yep. yes uh you all have those we'll be dropping you off as normal at about 1500 feet so don't wait to pull the parachute it's uh you're you're gonna be pretty close right. but we're probably fairly good at coming yeah. down in between the trees not right on top of them that is the goal. Yes. Uh, Larkin's Peak should have an area that's big enough for you to to land on. It's got, I mean, it's not right. it's that big of a bare peak, rock but, areas. Right. What's the uh, elevation of Larkin's Peak? Oh, not that bad, he says. Um, he does not have an exact number for you, but uh, you would be able to hike up and down it without beating, you know, mountain climbing gear. Yeah, I'll look for a soft patch of rock. Yeah. That's experience right there. That's what's speaking. Okay. Uh, anything else before we get going? Uh, we have communication. Uh, yes. Radios uh, and everything. Yeah. Radios. You'll be hooked into uh, me and Jonathan up here. Uh, he kind of points at the pilot. Uh, we'll be in in touch with you if you need us uh you can call us up we'll we'll get in contact with people we'll get you uh, if you need flybys uh anything like that we can help out yeah. um, we any like a uh, major uh med kits or anything like that that help with like, yes okay yes we have an emergency kit in and he uh kicks the second crate in with his boot uh it's in here um, it's in with uh, some of extra like walkie talkies, flashlights, flares, that sort of thing. Okay. Cool. And as you are kind of nearing this area, you can see the fire that's going. And you've seen some of these where the smoke is uh, billowing heavily, but this one is probably the thickest smoke you've ever seen. It's reaching far into the atmosphere and it looks uh you're all pretty experienced with fire it looks like whatever's burning is very hot uh, this one's gonna be and, fun was there what do you know if there was anything in the area that might be burning is the smoke uh particularly uh I mean, you know, is it black? Is it white? Is it gray? Uh, is it? It's it's kind of like a uh, off white sort of feel to it. Yeah, is uh, a and lot that... of these kind of pine trees and whatnot are are going up in front of it and creating that. So it feels normal to us. It doesn't feel like an industrial fire that would have a lot of toxins right. in that. Right. Right. Yeah. This seems like a natural sort of okay. uh, fuel source. The barbecue boys, you bring your marshmallows. Hopefully I we're not the marshmallows. marshmallows. Does does Buck have a full I mean you can fit snacks in your pant legs actually. They have little yeah. little pouches kind of by the feet. So do you have like a stay puffed marshmallow bag with you? All right. Yep. Jumbo. Is there is there a danger that like because it's hot, we're just going to be like held up in the air by the hot air if we go too close to it. <laughs> I don't think we're dropping right over the fire. Okay. Right? Okay. You'll be about a mile out. Yeah. So you should be good. But uh, I suppose if that became a problem, you guys are expected to deal with it. God damn it. That's a long walk. <laughs> 
Yeah, well, that's uh, that's why they practice you so damn hard. Is yeah, it's only three miles to the trail, and the trail's only like fifteen before you hit town, so it's not that bad. And you Ooh. should have food for like three days, so it it won't be, you know, won't be that bad. But have fun lugging all the equipment. Glad I don't have to. I'll be back at base. <laughs> Freddy chuckles a little happily. All right. Well, there's the peak. Uh, yep. Let's get going. Looking out. Yeah, it uh, looks like there is a pretty nice uh, patch of soft dirt that you can attempt to hit. It's uh, got an angle to it, so it's mostly scree. Don't slide down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you can see where he put that line. Um, the line kind of goes off in both directions. Is you're really going to land here, and you could split up from there. And uh, we'll say as well that you do have some other um, extra smoke jumpers. There would be three extra to bring you up to a total of eight. So you know there's a, there's a few there that shall remain unnamed unless we need backup people. And they all in unison say, we're ready to go. Wait, who's in charge of this mission? Who's going to be the, the person on the ground? They look at you, Five. Hmm. I, I guess I'll like be the... Nick's a natural leader. All right. Yeah, but we got all we all have to uh, you know, see for ourselves, and uh, I'll, I'll just coordinate. Good enough for us, they say. You know, I didn't uh, think about it when I created the character, but most likely we'd all have some some serious wilderness survivor, right? Yes. If you want to uh, put some of your stats into natural world, we'll kind of be using that for you. That's what I did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I yep. did that too. Yep. Yeah. Feel free to uh, to kind of move stuff over there. We'll, we'll assume that for that. And you should all at least have a, a 50 and like parachuting, that sort of thing. You are yeah. trained for this sort of thing. And in fact, now is the time as you start to go out the door. It is kind of a drop, shoot opens, drop, shoot opens. Let's see some rolls for parachuting. Minimum 50. 34. 33. Ooh. 11. 82. Okay. 21. On the other side, Franklin. Okay. <laughs> four, four left. <laughs> <laughs> so, Franklin, you're going a little off course as you are heading down. You're you're distracted. Uh you're you're pulling on it. Um go ahead and just uh you you slam into some bushes and whatnot, but you're not so just yeah exactly. You get dinged up, but there's a reason you're wearing Kevlar and a collar and a thing. Like it hurts, but you're not out of it. I would like the others to make a spot hidden though, as they're kind of doing a more controlled landing. Yeah, where the hell is Franklin going? going? It's gonna uh, be about a stream. quarter mile Five. off. Yeah. Uh, Ninety. <laughs> okay, uh, Tristan, you got an extreme. So as you are going down, you notice that near the edges of the firewall that's coming your way, there appear to be little flashes and flickers of a blue light, kind of like a bright blue LED light just going off here and there. Does this seem kind of like on the same spot or is it just kind of like just moving? It's this? kind of along the, the wall and it's it's tough to see, right? You can't see everything through the trees, but there's just like little flickers of blue. Okay. I'll, uh, once everyone lands, I'll convey it to everyone. Say no most fire, static electricity, the air gets churned up, maybe. Could possibly be a SOS, maybe. Oh, you I, think? It doesn't seem that big. Yeah. Not that big. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, it, there could be people out here, but they'd probably be campers and whatnot. So you would know to kind of be on the lookout for them to tell them to get the hell out of Dodge. It could be a marine flare. Um, so I'm going to uh, signal with my flashlight for the crates. Mm-hmm. Get, okay. Post myself in, a, you know, in a reasonable clearing so that they have a good target. Where's Franklin? Franklin landed somewhere over there. Yeah, about a quarter mile off. Uh, I'll, I'll be there and just give me a, mi- a couple of minutes. I got to huff it over there. I'll double time it. Just give me a minute. <laughs> All right. We'll, uh, we'll keep you. You know, to see <laughs> yeah. which direction to come in. Yeah, you're kind of up to the peak and you're able to see Franklin just down a little bit uh, in the rocks there. Jackson, you're flashing for Freddy there. And I want you to also make a uh, spot hidden. Uh, and I'm still blind. It's the, I got some smoke in my eyes okay. on the way down. Okay, yeah, but you are watching the plane as you're going and you're signaling as usual. You see one of the crates get pushed out like normal. And you notice going across the sky very quickly there appears to be like a a hawk or something going Mm. and it collides directly with the rotor blade of the uh, plane which explodes into a burst of flame as you're watching this and you can all hear this boom and shouts over the thing yeah were the uh, the three extras on the uh, plane? They made it down, so, too. Yeah. Oh, okay. They, they've made it down. Uh, you know Freddy's up there, and he's still, like, the plane didn't explode entirely, but that motor is basically out. You yeah, can see it. Yeah, the airplane's going down. Yeah, pushing flames. Yeah, it's going down. And, yeah, you can hear Jonathan and Freddy just yelling in the cockpit of, get you know, get the rest out. and Get out, yeah. Mayday, mayday. I'll uh yep. I'll radio into headquarters if I can and say uh the airplane's going down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you you can get someone on the other line there, you know, they're taking notes of uh, okay. It's, and it's... you do see a couple of other crates get pushed out on the way. Uh it kind of looks like they're going to be in between you and the um that uh, surveyors lookout that they'd okay. mentioned. Oh yeah. Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and climb up a bit uh to see where the plane crashes. Perfect. Yeah, so give me a I climb can... roll. Yeah. It seems like there's some clearings on the other side of the surveyor's tower, so they're probably going to try to put down there. I think they're all going to bail out. Um the hell I got I got a twenty nine out of sixty five, so that's a hard. I yeah, can see that where the is planes going down. Perfect, and yeah, it's probably it, going to start a little bit more forest fire. <laughs> Damn that, it! That is kind of your gut feeling. You do hear over the radio, Jonathan and Freddie shouting something like "Aim for the lake." Actually, it looks like they're going to try and get it landed in a lake, um, and they splash. Uh, that's the last thing you hear over the radio is kind of this impact sound of water and nick you can see uh to the east there is a lake i will send a picture to the thing just giving you a visual layout i pull up on my my phone uh a topographical map of the area which i probably have yeah exactly yeah and you can see in the distance uh Probably about two miles or so. Looks like they've splashed down into a a lake. Okay, unnamed lake. Uh, it actually. Uh, you have the thing. It's a Fawn Lake, for what it's worth. Fawn, F O N D. Uh, F A W N, like a F A W N. Yep. Uh, a- aircraft gone down at Fawn Lake. Uh, I call it into headquarters, mm-hmm. and. Uh, but did I see everybody jump out of their airplanes or did the airplane or you don't think Freddie and Jonathan jumped. You think they tried to, to write it in. All right. Uh, 
don't know if there's any survivors. Uh, hopefully, they got yeah. down to the lake. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll scramble another. We'll scramble a helicopter and do our best. It'll be a bit. All right. So, what do you think? Do we leave it to them, or do we postpone the mission to go check on the plane? I think the fire means that we've really got to do our mission. Um, Sounds good. We're heading a little bit in that direction anyway, so uh, we'll see if the boys can send up send up us a signal or contact us. Or if they contact you, tell them to stay put. The helicopters on the way. Uh, now we got to get those boxes that they dropped. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I think mostly that they, uh, they went out in the stand to uh, the northeast. Uh, hopefully the shoots on them will have caught in the trees and it'll give us a little visibility because if they're in the brush, it's going to be hard to find them. Uh, so I'll is there maybe a light. is there maybe like a, a little flashing light and a beeper on those crates? I can't hear you. It is. Uh, we can't. Yes, hear you. there probably is a blinky yellow light on them, yeah. but uh, they're just really wooden crates that they right. plop down. But yeah, uh, it should. sounds like Jackson is heading to the northeastern ones. Is that accurate? Yeah, and I think uh, maybe I'll if if the first crate has uh, chainsaws in them, like a short one will just help me with the brush, so I can get there to get to them faster. Yeah, yeah. I think we're all heading towards this. We need our we need the equipment. Okay, that's only about a mile, but you are trekking through wilderness uh, right. as you're going there. Um, Watch and your footsteps. Yeah, you can see that kind of inferno going behind you. Everybody go ahead and give a natural world just Light. as you're going. Oh, 008. And that is I'm sure it's an extreme. Yeah, it's an extreme. Ninety two. Why, if that isn't a branch mushroom yeah. right there growing right down that tree. <laughs> Frank, then I There's think you had some head trauma on the way down. Uh, I'm still a little rattled, I think. It's okay. Have a marshmallow. Uh, I think I got some elk jerky in my pack here. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's a little tougher going for those who have failed, and that is slowing you down a little bit. Nick, you're... you're keeping people moving but you know kind of in the back of your head that all of this is on the time limit of the fire spreading right. uh, at some point you will lose that crate that is kind of closest to it but uh, you that's are... why i was kind of hoping there was like at least a yellow blinking light even if it yeah. gets dark it'll we might be able you... to see the you do have three extra people if you do want to send them the other direction. How about that? Yeah, we'll send the, the three other guys towards the other crate, see if they can get yeah, can recover it. Okay. Sounds good. They will head out that way and exit the story for the moment. Uh, do we, you think that we probably tend to work on GPS coordinates? I would I don't think know you how probably, accurate. yeah. I'm not sure how accurate they would be without cell towers, though. Around, they'd be able, they'd be maybe you know, like a satellite phone of some kind to just to keep you in communication with people. Well, the satellites tend to they can't pinpoint your location without Ooh, other yeah, things uh, bouncing, but yeah, they can get you within a hundred feet. Yeah, that's probably good enough for most of what you're doing here. Right. As a uh, hundred feet radius is acceptable. And you might actually be able to pin the surveyor's tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, would you like to do that? Uh, the... Jackson, yeah. Like try and get the surveyor tower on the radio, on the communications. Oh, I mean, there's a chance somebody's up there, I guess, right? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll ping them. Yeah, you get uh, a 
kind of a staticky bit and then uh, uh a like a radio sort of thing picks up of uh hello hello uh hey uh, uh it's good to know somebody's you're on the survey tower uh near the trailhead uh northeast of larkin's peak yes uh who yeah uh sorry um i didn't realize that they gave out this number to to guess uh we are not guests uh we are uh here to uh attempt to mitigate the fire that you should be able to see from there oh uh, yeah we were wondering if we should be worried about that I, you absolutely should uh, begin planning your evacuation. Did you see the plane go down? Uh, I heard something, yeah. And you hear this uh, this voice in the background that's, uh, I told you we saw something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I didn't see exactly where it went. Right, so you didn't see where the crates went down either. Um, are you, how big a party are you? Oh, it's uh, just me and my fiance. And what, what's this about guests? Oh yeah, we uh, rented out the, the place. I was told we can rent it out for a bit. Dobbs, do you know anything about rental properties? Well, that sounds kind of odd. Um... Tell them if there's a, a if there's some sort of a, a control. I don't know if there would be a control panel. Would it be like a red blinking light on the top of the station? We might be able to see it if we get into a clearing and look up the. Uh, yeah, uh, they can start looking if you yeah. relay that. I'll I'll tell them there should be a switch on the wall with a. A little, uh, you know, black sticky note above it that the light turn that flip that on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they yeah, need and... to think about getting out of there. Okay. Um. Uh, we should tell you too, though. There's a. There's another fellow we saw, uh, that came through here. You should keep an eye out for him. Uh, just it looked like he was camping in the area. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So are you having some sort of wedding celebration? I mean, no, she doesn't. She doesn't know this is. Uh, I got a ring and everything. All right. Will you and your guests? I assume you're parked somewhere north of there. I uh, know we hiked up here. Okay. Where'd well, you hike in from? Uh, east of here, the the trail kind of ends. Uh, and they, I forget the name of the trail, but there is a trail that kind of. Right. leads out from there i'm uh looking at the the top graphical map is there a trail that leads north anywhere? uh not really it kind of follows out east and then kind of goes a little northeast i mean east is at least a start um yeah we're again we're here to we're trying to, we're going to try to mitigate this fire but there's no guarantee that that area is going to be safe so you should begin you should oh, gather shit. your people make sure everybody's accounted for and start moving okay yeah uh we can we can do that and you are again hearing this voice in the background that has begun to say i told you it was a bigger deal get the yeah get the impression there was arguments things are off to a grand start with that marriage yeah. sure it doesn't mean northeast. anything Conflict okay. is the basis for every healthy relationship, Jackson. Camping uh, isn't the best place to propose to your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. It also happens to be the basis of an unhealthy relationship as well, though. <laughs> uh, but you do see a few miles distant, there is now a red blinking light from the tower. Yeah. There's the tower. All right. So if the plane went down to the lake a, a bit east of the tower, so with that we can use that to help uh, navigate our yeah. way toward where our equipment should go, have gone down. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the the boys are 
also heading towards the tower. They should be able to see it from the lake. Yeah. And it is about that time you do find the first crate. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the direction you were looking to go. It's right on the trail. And uh, you can see it got dinged up like they usually do in the drop, uh, hit a couple things, but it is on the ground, thankfully. Uh, and I would like someone to roll a, a D3. Tell me the number. Get a one. Okay. Okay. Cracking it open, you are just overjoyed to find that it is the uh, essential emergency and disaster kits, oh. uh, extra walkie-talkies, and then flashlights, flares, uh, emergency oh. whistles, all sorts of different communication things that you can use to signal distress. Uh, okay. Unfortunately, it is not the pumps or the uh, uh, fire axes, chainsaws, that sort of thing. Can I call up the secondary team that was going for the other boxes and see how they're doing? Yeah, um, it's getting it's getting hot here. Uh, but we did find the box. Uh, roll me a D two, please. They say over the radio. <laughs> uh, one. Okay. Uh, ah, damn it. Um, yeah. Well, we found the uh the fire shelter, the food, sleeping bag the pumps, and a whole bunch of water bottles. Oh. So the other one is our Husqvarna uh, chainsaws. Damn it. All right. Um, we're we're heading in the direction of the tower. Can you see it from where you are? Uh, red uh, light blinking. Uh. We know roughly where it is. Um, well, we got a. We kind of went downhill to get here. We'll we'll come back up. All right, Dom. Dom, shouldn't we move toward the fire and start, try to set that break? We have the equipment in the first crate, but from before the flare. Yeah, we could start making that. Yeah, we're not that far from that spot. I mean, a couple of us could go to the tower if we want to see if Eddie and Jonathan are there, but most of the hands should probably be. Felling trees. Yeah, we need to do this. This is what we're here for. Uh, besides, oh, if we, we can't we can't rescue anyway. We don't have the the means to rescue people. Yeah, that's a good idea. But now we don't have our. our we got to find those uh, those uh, chainsaws. Aren't all three crates accounted for now? Uh, the last crate is actually to the southeast of where you are right now, but not terribly far away. Yeah. Let's head and see if we can find that. Okay. Uh, sounds like everybody's headed that way unless someone's splitting off from the group. And uh, everybody do a spot hidden. Ready seven is a fail. Oh, oh, I got a oh four, and I got oh. an oh six. I don't know thirty got failed. Okay, and that case, uh, Franklin and Jackson, you are trudging back towards this other crate. Uh, just so excited about how everything is going so far, ah. and you see that there is a deer a little bit in the distance, just kind of a, a common white-tailed deer. But what surprises you is it's walking directly towards the fire. Which is still, uh, you know, at this point, a couple miles away, but it's just moving. And you do notice kind of uh, on the back of its neck, there is a little flickering blue it's very difficult to see, but you rolled very well. How far away is it? Uh, about a quarter mile. And it's not moving too fast. It's its body language is interesting. It it doesn't look like it wants to go. Huh. That is the damnedest thing to see. Um. Hey, 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 guys! I'll I'll catch up with you at the uh, uh at the crates. I want to go take a look and see what's happening with these wildlife. 
There What's should up? be a general stampede away from the fire, but this guy over here is, seems to be, I don't know, confused or something. I wonder if it's separated from family. Does it look, was it a yearling? Is it a young buck or a doe? Uh, or? It's uh, an older deer. So well, not, not too female. young. It's uh, got some sort of tracker male, on its back, so. too. Um, yeah. I wonder if there's some researcher out here who's been putting. Well, watch out. The uh, male disoriented uh, might attack, you know. I don't know if it's a good idea for you to go alone, though. So no, we'll, could... we'll both go. I'll just be a minute. Okay, okay, okay. We're just going <laughs> to sort of wave this guy away from certain yeah. doubt. Yeah, try to push it back where it's supposed to be going. Not a bear, so. Yeah. Yeah. How, how much damage can a deer really do? A good amount. Uh, well. You do that on your Kevlar. <laughs> they can kick you pretty hard and rut you. But, mm -hmm. And oh, if who they're weird the and disoriented, they can do some. Franklin, then, you are heading up and Jackson a little bit behind you, perhaps. Uh, so you are getting closer to this deer as it's moving kind of uh, perpendicular. So towards the fire, you're kind of moving towards it with the fire's edge. And you get closer and you realize part of what makes it so strange is that this deer is shivering. Like shivering, shaking. as in fear or cold shivering. It, it kind of looks like cold. Oh, huh. okay. Because I'll definitely be making as much racket as I possibly can mm -hmm. to just try to get the thing to move in the other direction. But and um, it's yeah, and it's not running away, but it's got like a wild look in its eyes. Like adrenaline is probably very high right now. Yeah, let's you know, like um. You know, sort of bang like a stick against trees and through the brush as we go to sort of get it. Can you see that light? Is it? I would think if anybody put a track on it, it would be attached to one of the legs. Yeah, it's an odd spot for it. Is there any sort of is there any sort of pattern to the light? Not really. Uh, it may be more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? A constant than you initially think. It might be the fur that's kind of moving and blocking it here and back uh but the closer you get the more obvious this little blue light is and it's uh decently bright like it, it is an led type of feel to it um but eventually like you guys are getting close enough and you're making noise and everything and it just stops in its tracks and is just shivering God damn thing. I wonder if it's got some kind of disease. Is there a fever that makes deer shiver like that? Tick or something, maybe. And the light, is the is the source of the light evident at this point? Can we see, like, the... How close are you getting? Well, how far... How, when, when it stops, how mm -hmm. far away are we? Uh, Let's say you're about 30 feet away. I'll go half the distance between that. Okay. Um, you're kind of getting the feeling, uh, Franklin, you're getting up closer to it. You're thought of like a tick sized thing is about right. Cause you're, you can just barely see this, uh, kind of on the back again, under the fur, there is that little tick sized blue light flickering and you can hear the breath of the deer just doing that. <laughs> Like it's it's still shivering and cold and scared. I I do not like this. I don't like it either. We can't leave this poor creature here, though. Uh, I don't know. Oh, what the hell? I'll go over and grab hold of the blue thing and yank it off of it. Okay, you're going up. You get your hand close to this. You've got your glove on. I assume it's. Uh, quite uh, heat resistant at that point um, and you reach out and you touch the deer you're kind of going for like a pick and I want you to roll a constitution check as in front of you and Jackson you can roll a sanity check that Franklin will get to in a second Franklin you basically pinch 
and the deer's head neck up explodes in flames and they start to lick back from it and it screams as it's immolated on the spot it's thrashing around away from you uh, uh well i got a 75 out of 80 on my con so i did pass it okay that's good that is excellent i got a 72 out of 50 on my san so i am not feeling all right okay uh, go ahead and roll a d4 uh, if you fail the sanity. And uh, Franklin, take a couple points of damage as you feel through the glove a intense amount of heat just burn. Uh, and you can basically feel your skin kind of cook a little inside the glove. Fuck! I probably would probably take my glove off if I'm feeling something burning inside there. I'm probably going to take that off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you uh, you rip the glove off. Some skin definitely comes with it. And you can see now embedded uh, right between the fingers right there. There is this glowing blue. Just constant light. Embedded into your flesh. I take it I need a sand roll for that? Uh, yeah, that probably makes sense. Uh, 38 out of... Really? I've got an 80 sanity? Okay. You're, you're sane as houses. Uh, just one, then. Just one. Okay. What the hell is that? What um, the hell you, have, have you got there? Um, I'm... Well, I think it's the same thing that Creature just had. I don't... I, I, my first initial instinct is I'll just get out my hunting knife and cut that out. But seeing what the hell happened to that deer, I don't know if I want to do that. I kind of like this hand, even though it is the left. I use it for stuff. How the hell did it get through your glove? I don't know. Um, shit. Uh, is there a tree nearby? There's gotta uh, be. Oh, yeah, there's definitely trees nearby. And your glove is just on the ground at this point. I'm assuming you kind of dropped it. Yeah. Um, can I kind of rub my hand up against the tree? Yeah, you absolutely can. And it hurts like the Dickens uh, as you rub your fresh burns against bark. Um, oh. but, but the yeah, blue, would, blue thing is still there. It is still there. Yes. All right. Uh, I probably uh, have at least some sort of medical equipment on me as it is. I'll mm -hmm. probably uh, uh, kind of a flash spray type of thing to put on put on there and, and wrap my hand back up and uh, I'll shove it back in the glove. Uh, okay. but, uh, Jackson, we, we don't have time for this. We got to deal with the fire. When you um, flash yeah. spray it, go ahead and uh, roll me a D6, please. <laughs> uh, two. Okay. Uh, you notice, uh, like, you're spraying antibacterial stuff on it. You notice the light kind of flickers for a second. And it, it's not hurting more than your hand already hurts. It, it's already, like, a kind of pain that you're feeling. But, uh, yeah, that... Uh, it's tough to say. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we don't have time for this, Jackson. Um, let's well, Let's get back to the others. Uh, we don't have time. I mean, you can't. Uh, you're not going to be cutting down any trees with that thing in your flesh. It's just my left hand, Jackson. I can deal with it. We got to deal with this fire. Two-handed tools. Uh, I'm just. Can I? Can, do you mind if I just pour some water on it and see if we can douse the damn thing? Uh, sure. Uh, yeah. Why not? What the hell? So, yeah, water bottle on it. And there is a burst of steam and, Franklin, a shooting pain. Uh, go ahead and take a damage. As, Do that again. Yeah, you're scalded just on top of the burn. It hurts like the Dickens, but the blue light is gone. All right, all right. In that case, knife comes out. I'm going to dig that sucker out. Okay. All right. I Ooh. will grab a a, a, a a twig or something to put my between in between my teeth so I don't bite my tongue off and 
just kind of dig that son of a bitch out. Yeah, and it is like tick sized, so I mean, just barely you can barely see it as you pop it out, and yeah, you have a a very small thing in your hands. It it kind of is uh, it's actually a little squishy, like a almost like a little gummy as you're uh squishing on it. All right, I'm gonna put it in my Altoids tin and put it in my uh put it in one of my pockets, one of my pant pockets mm -hmm. and uh uh then i will uh you, you got a lighter on you jackson i gotta carterize this thing uh lighter you roll luck no idea sure excellent all, all, right. all, all, all firemen are also uh iros Yeah. yeah. Well, you need to be able to set like, yeah, fire breaks. It's yeah, that's right. thing. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So yeah. use the the heat of it to just kind of cauterize it a little bit, and then again, just kind of put the salve on it, wrap it up, mm -hmm. get it in the glove, and say, "All right." Yeah. Are you? As you put the glove on, you do see the reason it got through the glove. It burned a hole right through it. There's just a little, little <laughs> pinpoint. opening in your glove what the hell gets that hot and well, how... you know fire gets hot enough it starts to turn blue yeah but oh, i don't understand i mean maybe there was a defect in your glove but all right well um yeah well, let's you're, you're mute radio the yeah. radio the guys, other guys where and tell are them you not you're to taking mess too with long it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're on yeah. our way back. We're just uh, yeah. dealing with something. Uh, by the way, uh, don't pull off any blue ticks off of uh, creatures. Yeah, animals. Keep, keep an eye out for any blue glowing things. There's something coming out of this fire that's hotter than I understand. Maybe it's some sort of pine tar that gets super hot or something. It looked black once it was doused. All right, we're just on our way. Back. And the two of you are leaving a uh, dead deer carcass just smoldering away. Except and for the, the parts that are on me. Yes, except for those parts that are probably fused to the glove a little bit. There's probably a little hair sticking out. Um, Buck, Tristan, and Nick, you are heading towards the final crate. And you are luckily elated to find that it has landed a bit up in a tree. Ah, well, let's cut that down. down with my knife uh okay so you're climbing into the tree to get it yeah you, Dude, climb? you could you could start a horror series with that thing dobbs yeah good old buck knife please. uh 44 out of 65 that's a red killer perfect yeah you are able to get your way up there and it's a it's one of these pine trees like you have to get a pretty good distance off the ground And you are cutting it, and you're kind of looking up at the top of the tree. Uh -huh. And you see that there are a bundle of squirrels just kind of up near the top of the tree that are slowly moving around themselves. And it was kind of under the uh, the parachute, so it, you couldn't really see. But there's these right. blue lights glowing on each of them. They're just... sitting at the top of the tree. What was it you guys said about the blue lights? We said don't touch them. There's They're... some squirrels up in the tree here that have blue lights on them. Oh, I'll be damned. Uh, some sort of bug? I, you know, it's a fire bug if it is. I... I'm kind of getting a feeling as to why this blaze seems so intense. There's something I don't, I can't uh, explain, but that, that those, those squirrels, are the squirrels shivering? Oh, they're moving around each other. I'm, I'm busy up a tree trying to cut the crate down. Right. Uh, they look kind of, yeah, they, they're bundled together. Now that Jackson is saying it, that could be part of it. Yeah, they 
acting like they're cold. They're going to be pretty hot here pretty soon, and I cut the rope as it breaks yeah. loose. Steer clear of them. Something going on. Yep. And Buck and Tristan, up. you can, yeah, you watch that crate yeah. slam down, and it, it's heavy duty, but it's uh, going to be easier to open now. And you can see that there are a number of blades and axes and chainsaws within, enough to equip all of you with. Uh, yeah. Various cutting equipment. All, in the all right, let's get that fire break cut. Uh, I'll try to contact the other three uh, and uh, send them a signal so that they can come and join us to help cut the fire break. Yeah, um, yeah, and you have their extra equipment as well. Yeah. And there's a bit of a blip, and you hear them coming back uh yeah nick um yeah sorry this is hayden uh this this fire is getting kind of close to where we are what's your position uh, we're uh we're not we're kind of getting back towards the drop point uh i don't know if we've got the time to make quite all of the, what we were looking for uh, this is looking this is looking kind of sketchy Okay, let's um instead of doing the fire break now, let's go uh another couple of miles towards the uh towards the survey tower and make a break there. Yeah. Yeah, we'll uh we'll try and meet up with you. Uh and okay. you can hear, yeah, in the background of them, you can hear the fire going. Crackling. Yeah, from where you are, it's definitely advanced uh a fair bit long. Which uh, way is moving faster than we thought? Which way is the wind blowing? Uh, it is blowing towards the, uh, uh, I guess northeast. So Jesus. yeah, yeah, it's spreading it in your direction. So which the fire is, is going expected. The same direction as the yep. wind. Okay, cool. Yeah. So we got to get move quickly, get up a little ways, and then start the fire break. Um, hopefully, where there's already a lot of natural rock, so that we don't have to clear as much to to create a fire break. Yeah. Yeah. You think maybe kind of the slopes that are yeah. kind of by that creek might be helpful. But and is it a it's not a strong wind, is it? No, it's not terribly strong. If it was a strong wind, you'd be in a lot of trouble yeah, right yeah, now. We'd have to get out of here now. Yeah. All right, that's the plan. So you are heading, it sounds like, north, uh, northeast towards the trailhead, kind of keeping pace with the fire as you go. We are all lo uh, yeah, loaded down. Yeah. Go ahead and everybody do a natural world again. Franklin, your hand hurts too much to be doing this kind of thing. <laughs> a regular yeah, success. 17 out of 25. Okay. Very Regular. good. Uh, yeah, Franklin is the one slowing you down here. Uh, unfortunately, um, that hand hurts a lot, but you're not feeling cold, which maybe in the back of your mind you're worried about. You Mom, do, Franklin. Get... You're slowing us down. I'm gonna grab whatever <laughs> he's carrying with his bad hand. Mm -hmm. And. It's about that you're coming up on that creek. You've you've walked for a few minutes. You hear this static. Uh, do you guys see? There's something in the fire. And it's like crackling over the radio. It sounds like Hayden's contacting you. Can you guys hey. see that from where you are? Can you repeat that? Like, what do you mean when you see in the fire? Uh, in the in the smoke. I I thought I saw something. Stop you're looking gonna... at the fire. You're gonna you're gonna pee yourself. Uh, get moving. That was once. Make sure you're getting your oxygen, man. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, 
you then hear, uh, Louis, Louis, you've got something on your back. Oh, shit. Uh, what is it? Oh, it's this little, little blue thing. Uh, douse it with water. What? Blue glowing, douse, douse it with water. water. And yeah, you, okay. Splash. It sounds like they're listening to you. Oh, yeah, it stopped. Huh. What is this little thing? No idea, but they're dangerous. Something's coming out of the fire, I think. I, I, I've got, yeah. Maybe there's some, maybe some pine tar is getting airborne. I don't understand the color, but it burns like hell. So look lively. Move hey. your asses. Okay, yeah, uh, on the double. Come on. Yeah. Oh. Probably an alien. I've been watching a lot of History Channel after dark. Can you guess Ancient Aliens? Yeah, my favorite show. Hmm. Amazing how much nonsense is on the History Channel. Either that or the Nazis. <laughs> um. All right. We got to get something done, or I'm gonna have to make the call. We're gonna have to get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and you have faster reached, than we expected. Yeah, yeah, you have reached the uh, the creek that kind of runs uh, west to east here, um, and you are looking back at this point with how long it's taken. The fire has reached um, the peak that you started in, okay. which. Based on how long you're here, it does seem like you're right. It is moving a little bit faster than you want. So start cutting this direction and this direction. You know, no. Uh, okay. Uh, All right. So uh, spread yeah, out. Get the smaller stuff yeah. first. Yeah. And but, my understanding, and I'm sure it's 100% wrong, but uh, basically what you do is you're cutting down trees and you're even setting some trees on fire and cutting them down to, you know, get rid of all the fuel before it reaches the area you are uh, in. Yeah, you're trying to make a control line. Right, right. Yeah. But it's tricky because the wind is blowing towards us. us. Right. right. So I would yeah. like everyone, as you're kind of spreading out and doing this, to make another natural world check as you're going. 27 out of 90 out of 20. I passed. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no uh, luck from so, Jackson and Buck. Or sure, sure. Uh, hard. Okay. Wonderful. It's a, uh, it's kind of slow going, honestly, as you are going through here, but you are doing the steps as you go. You're setting trees up, cutting them down. The tools that you're using are good. But you are struggling a little bit with the sun going down, and it is nighttime as you are starting to cut these down. You can see the red glow of the fire slowly approaching. And Tristan, I think you're probably the one that notices uh, the next pack of deers that start to pass through this line. And they're all standing at the creek edge and just shivering like the opposite side that you're on basically of they they don't want to cross towards the fire and it looks like there's probably about eight of them huh. um, I'm gonna mention that over the radio to everyone There's like eight deers across from the like, and they won't cross the water. They won't. Wait, they won't at all. They're just like just standing there on the edge. Yeah, but they have little blue things on them. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. think so? But they're on our side, right? They're they're not on the fire side, uh, northern side. So they would have to cross the river to get to the fire, and they are not doing that. So your little fire bugs, if that's what they are, are already on this side. Where the fuck are they coming from? 
Yeah, I assume they're falling out of the smoke, but again, I'm not, I don't, I've never seen this before. Uh, Tristan, can you set up a pump and uh, hose those deer down? Yeah, I can. I wouldn't get real close. I don't plan on it. But uh, they might start secondary fires. Damn, just thing. Yep. Go ahead and do a uh, operate heavy machinery there. Glad to put some points in that. I know, isn't it great? You're never going to use that. No. <laughs> oh, cool. I got a 33 out of 40. Nice. Yes, you start to hose down the deer. But what disturbs you is you hose down the first few and the others seem to see the, the water coming at and they start to step away and roll sanity as they're kind of bumping into each other, getting more and more worried. And then they also just combust in front of you. What the hell, Tristan? Are you starting a fire or what? <laughs> I, I rolled an 88 out of 50. Okay. Uh, this is not Delta Green, luckily for you. So uh, yeah. roll a D4. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, as you're watching uh, three four. of these. Yeah, three of these deer just immolate in front of you. And you are seeing they are catching a little bit, but not to a degree you're concerned about. Maybe try to put them out with the hose. Yeah, hose it down, hose it down. Make sure everything <laughs> around them is wet. Um, I don't know what the fuck we're dealing with. This is something new, guys. Something new. I've never heard of this before. Like I've never seen anything just combust like that. I mean, I, I sometimes we're worried that there are you know drug cartel. Uh, fields out here hidden amongst the trees. Maybe it's some sort of a chemical that uh, drug the people have been over. using. It's been like kind of like what they do with the mules just carrying over drugs and stuff this time it's deer. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but we'll just have to deal with it as it comes up. Uh, but I, what concerns me is they're already on our side of the of the creek. And they're heading towards the fire. Where are they coming from? They're coming uh, from the direction of the of the uh, the ranger station. Um, so this is sort of kind of probably more concerning mm -hmm. me now. Um, so I'm gonna kind of like look around more so to see if like there is any like, you know instance of like any in the trees or anything like maybe like blinking like yeah. the same with the yeah do a spot hidden okay and we have no firearms we wouldn't need mm. we wouldn't no. have any reason to have firearms I was thinking about that they'd probably I be dangerous nice just from the ammunition side um okay uh a 96 is that a critical uh, it is failure a critical cuz i got a 30 all right uh you are looking around and you do not, you're not seeing any of them. Um, but make a con roll, please. Oh, cool. Uh, I made it 35 out of 85, so it's a uh, hard. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, you take two points of damage as you feel a burning pain on your shoulder even through the gear as yeah you you look over there is a pinprick and just smoke pouring out of your shoulders oh, uh God. padding what the hell ah mm. god i think you've been hit yeah and it, it burns like the the skin underneath is swelling yeah you're probably trying to take it off and you can see there is as you're taking off there is a blue light underneath your suit on your shoulder uh, uh what did y'all do to get this thing off uh, brown it. it with water um you know yep yeah and there's that splash and take another point as that steam kind of rises out of your shoulder and yeah you can you're kind of at that angle where you can barely see it. Uh, there's just this little speck of like kind of grayish 
something lodged in your shoulder, but it is not blue anymore. What was that? Do we do we have like tick pliers? Uh, yeah, you'd probably have uh just first aid pliers. Get it off me, man. Just all right. Get I'll it go off. over to yeah. I'll go over to Tristan and say this might hurt a little bit, and I'll try you to get pop it, it off. off. <laughs> it does hurt a little bit. Um, yeah, ah. and again, it's like a a little thing, and it it kind of gummies in the tweezers as you're pulling it. Like it, it's a very strange feeling, but it's it just look- a very tiny. Does it look like a bug or an animal or alive or? Yeah, you kind of get it up close to your. You have to get it up close to look at it, and roll a sanity as you are you're eyeballing this thing. Because this little gray thing, it it almost looks like a little jellyfish. It's round on top with little bumps along the ridge, and then these sharp little spines pointing out the bottom of it. Oh my god. And yeah, the, the little of... squishy part is, yeah, the top part. It's like an amoeba or something. Pass the sanity. Okay, uh, zero then. You're good. Here, Tristan, yeah. take a look at this. <laughs> what is that? That was uh, on roll... me? Yeah, I roll thought that sanity. was like a... <laughs> yeah, Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it was luminescent. It's some sort of big cell. I failed because like, I was at 50 and I rolled okay. 48. Losing okay. Four. Roll roll a d6. Okay. Um yeah, <laughs> and part of this me, sanity, <laughs> yeah, part of the sanity is you realize you were looking for these. And this is where it kind of hits you is this probably fell out of the sky and just landed on you. <laughs> We've got all trees all around us okay. though, right? So it probably fell out of a tree. Um, guys, guys, we got to cut down some more of this brush. Oh, uh, douse we don't have guys. We don't have time for uh little fire ticks. Uh, we'll keep an eye out because I think these things are falling out from the sky. At least they can't fly. For what we know, squish, squish, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to radio in and uh, I, I'm gonna say I I don't know I don't know exactly what to say but there's something out here I'll say uh some sort of an animal or an insect that we've never seen before but it it seems to be able to spark fires. Uh, can you repeat? Well, yeah, it's as crazy as it <laughs> sounds when I say it, but we've been hit by a couple of these bugs, and they burn like fuck. And if you uh, if you squish them, they burst into flame. We've seen three deers go down right in front of us, bursting into flame. Can you make a persuade roll of some kind? Yeah, probably a you, you can't. Yeah, you can have a plus 20 uh, on a Persuade because they have oh. worked with you in the past. Well, I got a double of six, so... Okay, no um, problem. I mean, it's, what can you do about it? It's just right. something... Uh, it, they seem like they believe you and are, are understanding, although what the hell they're going to do about it is kind of the... Uh, okay, um, great, uh... Have you heard from uh uh from Freddie and Jonathan? Uh Freddie and Jonathan are are they with Hayden? No, oh, no they're in the plane at the lake. Yeah, uh they're in the plane. We've heard nothing from them, but um Shit. there does seem to be some campers up at uh, the survey tower. Uh we've told them to head north, northeast okay. away from the fire. Yeah. We're we're working on getting that uh that evac for you. Um do you want us to send it out to them first or to try? And, yeah. Well, the fire is moving pretty quick. Yeah. To okay. get, get to us as quickly as you can. We're okay. heading towards a survey tower. All right. Sounds good. Eventually. Yeah. So uh, I don't know what they yeah. are good, but yeah, we've got a, 
I need to do a sanity roll because I don't know what's going on. I passed way too easy. Twelve. <laughs> I don't know why they haven't gotten a chopper yet for the down plane. I wonder what's going. I, yeah, but we've just got to. Um, Dobbs, how long do you think until the front edge of that reaches this creek? Get a good look up at it. So I'll climb up a little and look out over that. Mm-hmm. You think uh, roughly and the way it goes is you're probably going to get to the lookout at about the time that it's hitting this creek yeah. and that should slow it down. Got uh, about 40 minutes. Yeah. Unfortunately, you also realize that the lake is like you can go towards the lookout or the lake, but if you don't go to the lake, the fire is probably going to hit there fairly soon. Well, the lake is full of water, but we could get stranded at the lake. We'll have to get in the water and. Hopefully, the if if the fire gets to us, doesn't eat up all the oxygen. Well, uh, do we want to we want to retreat halfway and set up another break. I mean, there's lots of these little creeks, but they're not very wide. Yeah, I don't if know. We can, if we can slow it down here and then slow it down again, maybe we'll finally get some air support. I think it's moving a little too fast, though. So, I'm not sure we're going to be able to do much good. We might have to cut our losses. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to climb up and get another good look and see how fast I think if it's really whipping up, mm-hmm. then make I think a, can uh, make, yeah, make a spot hidden check as you're standing, you're looking out at this horizon that is filling with the flames flickering in the dark. A 24 out of 25. So just barely, just barely you're looking there. You Again, you think eh, if we hoof it, we're going to make it the last bit of the mile up to the lookout. And it's probably going to hit here. But there is a flash where you see something in the smoke of the forest fire. Fairly high above the ground, just whoosh. And it's quick, but it's bright and it kind of kicks the smoke out. You see like a little trail of it. But the size of what that would need to be would make it like stadium-sized. It would be massive. Okay, I'm going to roll sanity again. Yeah, roll roll a sanity. Uh, what, what is my sanity? 32. Let's see. My sanity. I actually never wrote down my sanity. What is sanity? It's a pow. Uh, that sounds yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, equal yeah. to pow. Yeah, it's still a pass. Um, okay. Just one, because that shouldn't have happened. Maybe the fire hit weird, but... Well, I'm starting to freak out because of the weird... Uh, weird stuff that we're encountering. I don't think, boys, that we're going to be able to do much here. I think... Uh, does the lake seem safer than the survey tower? If it gets to the survey mm-hmm. tower, will the survey tower go up? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, it's just a, a wooden structure that would not save you. Yeah. I I think we need to head for the for the lake. We can meet up with the others Uh, and get get pulled out. Yeah, you also know that that other group had fire shelters, which if you can get to them, that's another way. You can basically hide under the structure as the fire goes over you. As long as it's moving fast enough, you can just kind of wait it out. I mean, we can literally lay in the creek and put that over the top of us. I'm not a firefighter, so I don't know if that would boil you like a lobster, but I like the sound of it. <laughs> I don't think you could heat up the water that fast. Um, I'm, a, I'm a hot pocket. What do you think, boys? What's your, what's, what do you think we should do? 
You know, I want to. I want to put in uh, as much time as is safe on this fire break because I want to see this thing hobbled before we retreat. Uh, but since we haven't heard the chopper yet, I think we should go and see if Jonathan and Freddie are all right at the lake. Okay. And once I'll, we've got uh, some distance, somebody should call the tower and make sure that that idiot and his fiance to be have actually moved out. There's nothing idiot. we can do if they haven't. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I want the other uh, the other members of our team uh, call them too and tell them that we're heading towards the lake. Okay. And, uh, uh, am I getting any response? Yeah, roll luck for me. I say for me, really for them. Fifty two. Where's oh? I only got fifty luck, so no. Uh, the sounds you are hearing are uh heavy breathing and running on the other side you kind of click in and you hear them we're we're coming we're coming we're coming we haven't had time to to go this thing is uh, it i i don't know what happened it got a uh, it, it, it whatever something got louis i don't know a, a tree or something just fell on him right next to us it's we got to go All right, do what you can to survive. Okay. Um. Yeah, lake. Uh, we'll we'll come to the lake. All right, Lake Fawn. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Sure. Uh. And yeah, line line hits, but you get the impression they are kind of sprinting. Haven't even had time to get on the radio. They've got the shelters. We need to head to to Fawn Lake. Okay. As the group is going. The fire is encroaching closer and closer. I would like another natural world roll, please. Fifty-four out of fifty-five. I keep barely making these. This is good. Ninety-seven. Okay. Failure. Sixty-eight out of twenty-five. Regular okay. only. I got a okay. hard. Okay. Very good. The group you actually end up kind of following a creek down towards this lake and you can see it as you're getting closer because there is a, a floating plane kind of in the middle of it looks like a, a wings sticking out um, but it looks like it landed fairly safely there is also a camp set along the edge of the lake uh, and it's not like the, uh, the uh, pilot would have set right like it's they're not going to camp. This looks like to be a uh, a person's camp, and there is a campfire that is huh. set up in the middle that is uh, roaring with a like a pan on top of it, and a uh, well, a really strung out looking man just sitting by this fire. You can kind of see him as you're getting closer, and you can also see that Freddy and Jonathan are laying kind of on like uh, uh, sleeping bags next to him. They appear to be okay. unconscious. Yo, yo. <laughs> As we're yeah. heading towards him. And this person looks up. Stay back. You need to leave the area. The fire is uh, coming. That's our, that's our line. <laughs> It's not yeah. safe by me. You need to leave. Those are our men you have with you. What's their condition? They're dead. Um, and make a, uh, it's not like a persuasion role in this. What's, what's a human version here? Spot lies. Psychology. 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 Yeah. No. That's I mean, some kind of woodland psychopath. We're I'm just we're not rev the chainsaw. <laughs> we're 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 not amateurs, so I'm just ignoring him thinking that he thinks we're campers mm -hmm. and just Ow. keep walking towards him. Yeah, yeah. It, it's tough to tell. I mean he's he's saying they're dead and he's no, no, please stay back. 
stay back. Uh, it's not safe by me. I'm what? highly contagious. We're firefighters. What are you contagious with what? You wouldn't believe me. You need to go, please. We have nowhere please. to go. There's a helicopter on its way uh, to rescue us, to get us out of here. You think by chance he's the, the fire's uh, coming this direction. It'll be here soon. I know. We we need to get those men. If if you don't want us to come near you, you need to back away. No, it's they're uh they're dead. Well, their families want their or, bodies for Christ's no, sake. They're, man. they're sick like me. Are they sick or are they dead? Uh, you can't take them. It's contagious. Just pour. Is it the blue light? No. <laughs> no. Sir, this is not funny. What do, what do you think you have? Hey, Dobbs, do you think he's perhaps a, a hiker that the uh, campers were telling us about earlier? Yeah, probably. He's got the clap. Sir, yeah, the clap. We're going to get the clap from the guy. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he has a venereal disease. Uh, 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 I say I, I'm still heading straight towards him. And mm -hmm. I'm like, sir, everything is going to be okay. We're going to get you out of here. No, no, it, it's not safe. It's you have to leave. And yeah, it's. He's not making a like a violent move or anything, and you're not seeing that he has a weapon of any kind. Uh, in fact, like he's dressed like someone that would go hiking, um, but just a civilian hiker of some kind. Um, but he looks you've seen a lot of hikers that are thin. Like it kind right. of goes with the territory. His cheeks are sunken and his oh, eyes are inset. Yeah, the closer you get, the more he's really doing badly. Sir, what's oh. your name? I'm Rory. Rory, uh, look, we're firefighters, and <laughs> you, you say you've got fight some disease. This. What what disease do you have? They're in me. I What's... see them when I sleep. They're burrowing underneath my skin. The little blue bugs? No. No. Those are just a, a, a side effect of the fire. Sir, have you taken methamphetamines today? No. <laughs> I wish I had. What do you mean there's a side effect of the fire? The fire, it's, it, the fire is coming to cleanse me. You need to leave. It's the only way. He said he wished he'd taken meth. He's probably withdrawing right now. We need to restrain him and, uh, yeah, take care of our people. Do the, do our, our guys look dead? Or do they look unconscious? Can we see? You're them getting breathing? pretty close, Nick. Yeah, they don't. You see, their chests are moving. Uh, they probably have, like in a movie, you'd see they have a head wound that obviously yeah. indicates they took a beating on the way accident, down. Right? But yeah, that's yeah, about the, guys, the, the limit of what you think. The guys are alive. They're alive. They're alive. Like this, sir. We're going to have to restrain you, and I'm going to move towards him. Okay. Uh, towards the other side of Dobbs, so he doesn't. Yeah, I mean, he's yeah. backing up. Uh, he looks like he's thinking of how to run, and the whole time he's protesting, like, "No, don't, don't get close, don't get close." Are you gonna try and like pincer I, him? Yeah, basically, I feel like he's just on drugs. Yeah. He's okay. Get him away from the two that are unconscious, so you don't do anything rash. Right. Okay. And I imagine we have some sort of emergency travoy situation to put our fallen comrades yeah. on. So that probably would probably, yeah. Piecing something together that we can well, use to drag them out. Well, we want to get them near the, we want to get down to the edge of the water so that if the fire gets here, we can get in the water. 
I think we want to keep moving away from the fire, actually. Yeah, and you are looking at the fire now as it's getting towards the point of cresting the edge. And uh, those who are going after this, uh, after Rory there, right. give me a uh, dexterity checks, I think, just to see if you uh, can get a hold of him. Oh, he's wily. I've got an 85. That is bad. Um, I got a 22. Yeah, out he's of not 67. that wily. It's a hard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Tristan, how do you take this guy out? Because he rolled really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I be squishy kinda, like a gummy. Yeah. I just kind of pin him like kind of to the ground. It's like, calm down, sir. Like you know, like <laughs> there's a fire. You know, this he pins him down. Then I'm going to jump on top of him too to hold him. Okay. We're sorry to do this, sir, but you're not thinking straight. Okay. I think you got smoke inhalation. You're just seeing things. Yeah, it it is pi- like piling on top of almost like a bird bone right. kind of individual. Like it, he doesn't weigh a lot. I want to know, though, as they're jumping down on him, uh, let's start with Franklin. Franklin, what are you doing? Um, well, if I see uh, if I see Nick and Tristan have any issue, I'll I'll go in and help them. Uh, but if not, I'll run over uh, to go take a take a look at uh, Freddie and Jonathan. OK, go ahead and uh, give me a first aid roll. Right. I got some first aid. 46 out of 60, so regular success. All right. Uh, You are looking them over. It looks like they will definitely have a concussion from the landing. Uh, Just, you know, you're doing like an eye thing. Uh, You're doing the light. They're definitely alive. Uh, They probably managed to swim to shore uh, is kind of the impression you're getting from there. Uh, There's negligible cuts and bruises. But roll a sanity check. As you see on the cheek of one of them, a bulge just move under the skin. And yeah, it's not giving off blue. It is just this bulge of skin and that it moves back down again. And where it is, is indented a little bit like it took a chunk out. Okay. I did pass, uh, Let's say one. All right. Uh, um, about how how about how big? Are you talking like maybe an inch or two uh, in length and maybe about dime sized is kind of the feeling you're getting. Kind of circular too. I'm gonna pull out my Swiss Army knife and do a little field surgery. Okay, you are starting to cut in. Buck, what are you doing? These are somewhat simultaneous. Um, I was going to, we don't have by any chance like some sort of inflatable raft or something, do we? Uh, probably, uh, if probably not, not in the emergency kit. If Maybe not, like a I'm, survival blanket? I'm going to try to like cut down a few logs or something and maybe... Okay. Just tie them together to make Ah. something that floats so we can float out onto the river if necessary. Okay. I would like you to do a spot hidden as you are starting to cut through these trees. All right. The lake is probably fairly shallow at the edges. You could probably wade out 20 or 30 feet before it's... Yeah. I got a regular. Okay. You are cutting these down and they are starting to uh, to go, you know, crash to the side. You're you're an expert in these sort of things, so you know how to uh, kind of make it happen. But you're noticing as they land and hit, there's a scattering of like those squirrels you saw before with the blue. And you are looking up and you're seeing kind of kicked up from the fire's edge, almost like fireflies dancing downwards more of these blue shapes kind of coming towards the lake. And you see that uh, of the two surviving smoke jumpers that are your backup characters, uh, one of them gets uh, hit by enough of them. They kind of stumble and fall and the fire catches up with them. So also make a sanity roll. 
God damn. Jimmy was a good smoke jumper. Oh, 11. That's two 11s I've rolled on Sanity okay. so far. Why, why did you not like Jimmy that much, I guess? Well, he ate my Pringles in the office lounge. <laughs> Very snack motivated. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, uh, you see Jimmy, and Hayden's the only one left, and he's booking it towards the lake at this point. Jackson, what are you doing? Well, uh, I don't know why Franklin is trying to operate on Jonathan, but I'm, I guess I've got, you know, I've, I've put together a couple of the travo travoys to, to be able to drag them away, and I'll probably assess Freddy's condition before I try to put him on it. Okay. Because we don't have any time with that thing is moving up on us. Yeah, so, go ahead. Uh, and, yeah, first aid, well, I think. Yeah, first aid is uh, a hard success. Okay, nice. Yeah, you are able to move him uh, as well. Um, but you did get a hard, and you can feel kind of as you're, you're moving him, you, you kind of roll him actually a little bit. Uh, we'll say, I don't know if that's the right way. It's probably better to pick him up. In some fashion, you are moving him, and he feels lighter. Like, you're, you're pretty used to roughly about what you all weigh. You're all fairly muscular. Right. He does not, like, the, the center of him is too light. Um, yeah, well, I'm going to chalk that up to my own adrenaline. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, you know, he feels... Sure, it's easy to pick him up, but that's just because I'm on my way to get the hell away from this fire and he's unconscious and there's this crazy guy. Do we have jobs? Do you have zip ties or something to deal with Rory? Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. You'd have zip ties yeah. with you. I mean, we can throw a rope around zip ties and just tug him along behind us because we've got to move unless you unless we want to drive the lake. I think we need to I, I think we need to get to the lake because we now have to climb back up away from the lake and we're mm -hmm. we're going to get caught in the fire. I think if we get in the middle of the lake or get into the lake, the fire can burn all around us. We'll be okay as long as we don't run out of oxygen. Well, it, yeah, and you're saying that as Buck, you are seeing these blue things fall out of the air and start to hit like these little the little lights, almost like fireflies, just kind of darting once in a while down, and the like ash out of this uh, fire that you're seeing. And I would like everybody to make spot hiddens again. Oh, one. Made oh, 64 out of 66. Nope, I'm too busy okay. struggling with this, Rory. I got an 05. You too, I tell you. And how'd Buck do? I didn't. I didn't see. Yay, nay? No? I didn't even roll. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm you're, not going to do 01. <laughs> uh, do roll a spot hidden, though. Just I got 19. Hard. Okay. Three of you see as the fire is cresting this uh nick and Tristan, you've zip tied rory's uh wrist together and he's please you have to let it burn kathuga must come and those that succeeded give me a sanity check as you are seeing out of the fire breaks a tendril and moves the smoke enough that you can see for just a moment this shining light from within the fire. Uh, again, stadium-sized, somehow fleshy and kind of rippling on fire. That's not good. I got a 61 I fail. <laughs> okay. I did pass. I got a 95. <laughs> Okay. I rolled another O one. Oh, okay. I, uh, uh, that's I'm only not... for those who succeeded the spot right. hidden. So if you failed, good on you. 
I think uh, Tristan and I are dragging Rory towards the water. Okay. So that we can get in. That's perfect. Um, Those who failed, roll a d20. Those who succeeded, roll a d3 on the the spot hidden results, of course. So if you failed the spot hidden, don't worry about it. What if you passed the spot hidden, but you rolled a 95 on your sand? Yeah, roll that d20. (laughs) Okay. Yes, as you see this massive flaming creature that is basically spitting off these little blue sparks. Uh, Uh, 14. Okay. And I project it onto my dog or something. (laughs) This isn't Delta Greed. Um, Tom, do you have the list of... Yes, roll intelligence, please. Uh, Yeah, do you have the list of manias handy by any chance? Uh, Book handy. I'm actually pretty dumb, but I rolled an 04. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, I pass my... Yeah, 1d8. Okay. Yeah, 1d8, please. Uh, for both the the high rollers over here. Seven. Eight. Uh, seven is hallucinations. You see monsters. <laughs> you already see <laughs> It's all just a hallucination. And eight is uh-huh. uh, the red mist. Oh. Okay. Um, let's... Uh... Let's start with Buck of those two as you start to hallucinate um, as you are seeing this. um, You are pushing out some of these things here. You see this creature in the distance and you have to avert your eyes almost. It's, it's It's too much to take in. And you look down at Jonathan and Freddy and you can see that there are spiders these pale multi-eyed spiders crawling all over them you are positive they're just rolling all over Freddy and Jonathan just taking bites out as they go I'm going to take my chainsaw and I'm going to start slicing them up. Okay. There's a goddamn spider nest in the air. Uh, while, before we get to uh, how Franklin and Jackson, who are the closest to that, start reacting, uh, Tristan, you got red mist as well. Um, Rory is in the middle of you, and he's shouting about this. Uh, we need the cleansing fire, please. I'm so sick. You have to let it take me. Yeah, he seems like it's his fault. Is he struggling? Yeah, yeah. He seems to he seems to want out, but he's pretty weak. But how's Tristan dealing with this? Is there's that um, deep well of rage? I, I'm probably just getting just tired of him. I'm just probably just gonna start attacking him. Great. Yeah, I'm just gonna You shove me out of the way and Yeah, I'm just yeah. get out of the way, dogs and I fall into the water. Yeah. yeah and how's Tristan uh like how are you attacking him what's your like are you just punching I'm, or are you... I'm probably just like grabbing by his like throat and just shut up shut up okay wonderful uh we'll get back to you as you are choking Rory he's screaming uh, well gurgling at this point <laughs> don't let it go out the fire must keep going uh Franklin and Jackson, you're kind of in the middle of this camp. The uh, the little pot on the campfire is bubbling, and Buck rocks up with a chainsaw. And uh, Buck, who do you who do you go after first, Jonathan or Freddie? Um, probably Jonathan. Okay. Uh, in that case, Franklin, you're seeing Buck come up. Uh, a chainsaw is not subtle, so I'm gonna say you see him coming. <laughs> I'll, I'll just <laughs> kind of what. What? What the fuck, Buck? What are you doing? I'll take get my I'll, spiders. I'll grab my uh, my fireman's axe and just kind of hold it up to try to get at least uh, get in the way of him coming down with the uh, uh, the chainsaw. Okay, let's uh, let's do a contested chainsaw versus axe roll. I uh, I guess that'd be some kind of melee weapon. 
Okay. Um, yeah, I got a is 12. See, I've got Fighting Brawl. Yeah, that'll that's okay. probably fine. Uh, As 42 out of 50. I got it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so Buck is successful. Um, what's that look like? Is the, the chainsaws coming towards the axe? Does like Franklin dodge? Does he does the axe just get hit? What's it? What's it look yeah, like? I, I would have just put the put the axe up or try to covering uh, covering Jonathan. Uh, to, so it's probably just going to go through, but I'll let Buck kind of describe how that looks. Yeah, I'm just going to go straight through the axe into his like thoracic cavity down and cut him open, cut open his guts. It's just like, nice. While while Buck. he's bent over, I am going to punch Buck in the face. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and uh yeah, roll Fair that enough. uh roll that attack um and then uh do roll a sanity as yeah, the uh the chainsaw makes quick work of Jonathan. Uh, I'm not going to roll for damage as um, uh I I'm going to spend 3 luck to make that an extreme success. Okay. Oh. Yeah, go ahead and roll a uh roll damage as a right. as a firefighter. I assume you're going to you're gonna have a damage bonus, right? Okay, so that is going to then be um, seven. Actually, wow! Oof. Oh my god! Let me... I think it's fair to say that'll at least break you out of. <laughs> no, you you probably oh. you probably knock me out cold. <laughs> uh, do you want to make a con check, Buck? Yeah, we'll I guess so. Um. Oh, Paper. 90. Yeah, yeah you go ahead, cold. <laughs> uh, I, yes, he owed me yes. 20 bucks still. I failed my sand check for the chainsaw assault on my colleague. Okay. What's the what's the a D6. For that? A D6, yeah. All right. I've taken four so far, and now that's five at okay. once. So I'm up to nine, which is almost a fifth of my sanity. Okay. It's um, uh yeah, not good. I so you know since I rolled a one to see the thing, and then I rolled mm -hmm. a one for my sand check. I'm just like this is clearly uh, hypoxia. Like the fire is consuming all the oxygen. I'm hallucinating. It's there's no question about what's going on here. I know this has happened. So he's hallucinating, and we're just gonna I'm gonna just float, uh, Freddie out onto the lake. I'm stepping in. We're going to get into okay. this nice, cool mountain water. The fire is going to rage over us. Uh, you know, it's the end of Buck's career, obviously. It's the end of Jonathan. But some of us are going to make it out. I like that. I like that. Um, Nick, you're in the water. Yeah, you kind of got pushed by got pushed uh, back Tristan. Into the water. Yeah. yeah, you see Jackson moving out. There's a fight happening on the shore kind of next to this campsite. What are you doing? Rory's I, like screaming, don't let it go out. And he, he does seem to be gesturing towards the camp in some fashion. Um, do I see, I mean, the fire is now coming towards the lake. Oh yes. Um, and I still haven't seen the thing. No, uh, no. You no I'm idea why they lost the guys. The um, get in the water! I yell. Uh, uh, and I'll I'll look at Tristan. I'm like Tristan, you're you're hurting the guy. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna wade over towards Tristan and put my hand on his shoulder. Let him go. Well. That's that's a perfect time as you are reaching out. Uh, Rory just stops and goes, I told you I was sick. And Tristan, your hands crush the windpipe down to the spinal column. And you see that crawling out of him are these pale multi-eyed spiders that are just moving all over your hands like he must have been filled with them but you there's no way he was so thin 
uh, make a sanity check as they're starting to scurry over your armor. I was going to mention, uh, I did go past my one fifth too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a failure. 79 out of 35. Okay. Uh, what is their number? I don't have it in front of me, so I will say a D6 again. As, yeah, you are seeing these spiders that he was filled with. And Nick, go ahead and you make a sanity check as well because you I are see also... Them. Yeah, you're seeing them. I, I made a six, so I took max. Oh, okay. that time I failed. Okay, uh, we'll stick with the red mist for you, Tristan, just to, to kind of keep going. Uh, this time, it's probably not... Uh, Rory, that is the, you know, there's there's these spiders all over you. I'm probably going to think Dobbs did something like he dropped a spider nest on the back of me or something. <laughs> um, so I failed. Uh, I passed my intelligence and I I scream and flee in panic. Uh do any of the spiders crawl on me? Ooh, uh, roll a dex check. I was going to say, if Let's I see, see one were crawl pretty on close, me, but... I'm diving into the water. I got 17 on my dex, okay. which is... Yeah, that's actually... Well, it's regular. I mean, it's a hard, not a... Yeah, yeah. You're you're splashing out of the water. Yeah, and you're I'm, outpacing I'm actually splashing them, deeper sure. into the water, probably. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm heading straight to the plane. towards the, hell, the, the plane, yeah. 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 Uh, and panicked, plane. so not quite in my right mind. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nick's going towards that. Tristan, you're you're filled with rage. Uh, sounds like... Are you going after Dobbs? What, what is your thought process here i probably like think he like threw some like you know him tapping me on the shoulder he probably dropped some spiders on me maybe as a joke or something that they didn't really erupt out of this guy and i'm probably just gonna take that anger towards him and probably go after him okay saying like why the fuck did he throw these on me okay uh franklin what are uh what are you up to uh well uh once uh Jonathan's body's been disemboweled, uh, and mm -hmm. I've got uh, a unconscious buck. What do I see? Uh, well, there's definitely little spiders crawling out of the uh, the cavity made by the chainsaw, which is still grinding a little bit as it's going. Okay. Uh, Are they getting on the buck? Uh. Yeah, there's no way he's unconscious. They're definitely getting right. onto him. I'm going to I'll, I'll I'll drag him off off the dead body, and mm -hmm. I will try to um I, I try to brush them off of. Okay, uh, roll a dex check. Uh, it seems like these are not as fully formed as some of these other spiders, so that's good. Uh, Sixty nine out of fifty. Okay. Uh. Boy, it's weird how they're just burrowing into Buck, huh? Um, Buck, would you like to be Hayden for the moment? Because I, I think, uh, I, be I believe Buck is unconscious for the moment. So yeah. uh, Hayden is rushing towards this uh, this scene, and there is just this sudden burst of violence, and you can see this campfire going uh, with the, the tent around it. it would seem pretty peaceful, except for the dead bodies and blood and the fire behind you and your dead friends. It's it's a bad situation. There's a giant monster in the fire. Everybody run for your lives. <laughs> hey, man, come into the water. It's There's no oxygen. People are going nuts. Come into yeah. the water before the fire gets. I'm going for the flotation device. Actually, okay. I'll help Franklin first and then go for the flotation device. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Are you, like, just grabbing him and kind of moving it towards that? Yeah. Okay. okay. In that case, uh, Jackson, you've floated out with the, uh, the unconscious fella on kind of like a makeshift raft of some sort, it sounds like. Yeah, he was on the travel anyway. I'm sure I've got something that I can use to keep it buoyant. 
empty water bottles, whatever, you know. Uh, he's very light, and you yeah. know, and I'm there, so you barely need to keep him afloat. Like he just he seems very buoyant at the moment. Yeah, and I just want to move. I'm looking. I'm sort of feeling around with my boots for the. You know, I don't want to tread water during the fire. I want to be able mm -hmm. to stand, but I want to be as far away from shore as possible, so as okay. to suffer the least from the heat, etc. Very nice. And I don't know that my friend is full of spiders, so. Why would you, really? All right. I know. The group is congregating around this and uh, this uh, plane in the middle there. It's still kind of sticking out, so maybe you can grab a hold of a wing or something. Um, these little blue shapes seem to be avoiding the water, thankfully. They'll kind of drift down and zip away. And unless there's something you are planning to do other than waiting it out, uh, is there anything someone's doing? Tristan will say you you have enough time to kind of break out of it as you get closer that you're not just immediately murdering Dobbs on the plane. Yeah, I'd probably just kind of snap out of it and just like, I don't know, just in disbelief of what's going on. Cold water. It's probably really cold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mountain lake it's cold water. Mountain. Yeah. And you see that this uh this campsite is like the fire's getting closer and closer. And finally something massive reaches out of the smoke. Like at this point, it's at the edge of the water, it's fire all around. And you see it seems to crush the campfire beneath it. And for just a moment you can see in this pot that was sitting there like the the covered pot it it falls it melts and there's just this stone tablet and then with a a snap the stone breaks and the fire disappears rather the the giant figure does things are still on fire but these blue figures that are moving around are gone. And it's weirdly quiet, except for the crackling around you. The spiders. The well, spiders I mean, still there. Buck's corpse is completely consumed on the beach, I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, for sure. Yeah. Unless Dobbs, somebody had gone and grabbed him, he's uh, he's toast. I'm afraid. Dobbs, uh, can you radio in and tell them that uh, there are a few survivors in the lake? We've lost a bunch of men, and we I, really could use a chopper as soon as the. I swam all the way to the the airplane, so I'm quite a yeah. ways away from you. I think. Oh, um, I think everybody kind of got we out were, we, to yeah, that we area. We were converging yeah. on oh. the plane as a place where we could not have to swim hard. Right. Um, yeah, right. I'm still half out of my mind, but uh, my cell phone's wet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can roll luck. Let's see. Uh, let's see how well guarded think, against the elements. This I think was. our radios should be pretty waterproof. It would be foolish. My my cell phone's dead. Uh, but All right. yeah. if you'll if you'll hold Freddy's float here, I'll I'll uh, try to radio. What mm -hmm. What the fuck was that? Thing. You saw the monster, right? Oh wait, no, this guy doesn't have that voice. <laughs> ah, you saw the monster, right? <laughs> that, that's creepy. <laughs> Why are you um, pretending to be? Yeah. A I think he's he's ghost possessed me. Uh, um, you don't think like since like I did choke him, and so like, some of the spiders probably did get on me. Are they still on mm -hmm. me, or? Uh, boy, make a spot hidden as you're looking. You don't see any on you. Uh, maybe 23 out of 30, so regular success. Yeah. You don't see any, but you feel like there's something under your skin. A little scratching feeling. Scratching feeling. Okay. I'm, uh, 
I'm screaming into the, the radio, where's the chopper? Where's the fucking chopper? Uh, and you actually hear the chopper. Uh, it's getting it's getting the, the couple. Damn those people. God damn those people. Uh, do, I mean, we can send it by. We we're have enough room. Fawn. Yeah, we're in Lake Fawn. Okay. Well, we're in Lake Fawn and the fire's the fire is fading it past us. Yeah, we we've lost uh, lost a lot of men. There was some uh, meth head out here cooking something on a camp stove that I think the fumes might have gotten to people. There was uh, anyway. It's bad news. Uh, we know we've lost uh, Jonathan. I how are Freddie's vitals? Um. <sighs> not amazing uh but he is i mean he's unconscious so it, like his his heartbeat's okay but it's not amazing uh yeah. if you were going to do like a medical thing you'd probably want him first is your your gut feeling yeah yeah as soon as the as soon as the the uh burn around lake fawn is low enough we need a medevac out of here uh and there's going to be some some really rough condolence letters to write How's the fire look from your perspective? It seems like uh, the worst is over. Yeah, um, from where we are. I mean, it's still spreading, but not not as bad. Uh, I don't. I think that break you got is going to save the uh, save the lookout at least. Yeah, I think you kept it on that side of the. Uh, good job. I mean, for what it's worth. It's the job, man. And yeah, the the helicopter actually will come up and it'll lower one of those uh oh bad uh, stretchers. Right? Yeah. Uh who's going Gurney. with the chopper? Uh we'll say there's enough space for a couple more. You see an arguing couple up top. I'm in the best physical shape, so I'll stay. Yeah, and I'm good at first aid, and I've been handling uh, Freddy, so I guess I'll go up with him. Okay. Okay. I'll climb into the airplane to get okay. out of the cold water, but yeah. Yeah, there's probably enough sticking out that you can at least sit down on something. And what's it look like for the four of you that are there as you're watching this helicopter go away? Um, kind of hoping they return quickly. Yeah. yeah. Just wondering if that still got that little itch or not. Yeah, you you do, and that's. I guess are you scratching it? Or are you just sort of? Yeah, scratching it. Your finger sinks in a little bit to the groove. Mm -hmm. Is something wrong, Tristan? Uh, I don't know. I think I got like an itch. Just uh, all this stuff going on. On edge. Oh, I got to roll uh, for sanity. Yeah, um, that that makes sense. I, I think what I'm when he says that he's got an itch, I'm leaping back into the water and swimming for the shore. <laughs> Okay. Very nice. Uh, swimming towards the shore will take off. Uh, Jackson, you are in this helicopter. Um, you get to meet, um, oh, what were their names? Uh, meet the couple, Oliver and Amber. They introduce themselves and they are just a real pleasant couple to deal with. Um, and go ahead and just roll, roll luck. Oh, you're muted. Okay. Um, yeah, as you're going, it does seem that uh he, yeah, he's unconscious, thank goodness. Uh just knocked out and 
you stabilize him with uh, a bit of the the old first aid and he seems conscious as you are flying off into the sunset um and i think let's do a bit of an epilogue as we're we're, we're watching nick swim away from the plane the helicopter flies off nick what's the next day look like for you because are you getting picked up or are you just walking back what's it look like no i i uh all i did was i swam to the shore uh and i waited uh uh for a bit i needed to dry off uh there was a lot of smoldering you know stuff around me mm -hmm. i'll try to get like a campfire going uh with debris that's left and sit there and dry out uh but i have a funny feeling that i don't want anybody to get near me and i'll just wait for the helicopter to come back just looking into the depths of the flame i love it uh tristan what's the next day look like for you um i'd hope that my uh itching wore down and uh if uh you know just go back to work probably ride the next chopper out mm -hmm. yeah um we'll say you uh catch a bit of a a sleep somewhere in that time and in your dreams it's the first time you've ever had it it's the strangest damn thing but there's this brick labyrinth that you're stuck in and everywhere you're walking, you can just hear at the edge of your vision more of these scritching noises. And okay. yeah, make a pow check for reasons. Um, I rolled a 48 out of 50, I think. Yeah. The next yeah. few yeah. months, yeah, are going to be tough for Tristan as you waste away. By the time it's done, you're, you look better than Rory did, but not by a lot. You're not going to be able to continue being a five ride. Like they're going to put you on medical. But eventually you do kick it, it feels like. You, you feel one of these times you stop having the dreams and somehow you're you're okay, you think. But you do notice a lot of people around you itching spots on them. Franklin, what's the next day look like for you? Uh, well, I figure... Uh since I uh, kind of burned my hand earlier in the uh, in the adventure that I'll probably get at least a a little bit of time off to heal. And so uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to head out into the, uh, drive out into the Montana wilderness and stay out as long as I can. Okay. Yeah, your, uh, your arm hurts like the Dickens. And every once in a while, you, you look at that, uh, that Altoid tin. Do you ever take a look inside it? Uh, I, I probably would have, uh, the day after the incident happened, I would have opened it up to see what it looked like. Uh, if there was anything interesting, I think I would keep an eye on it, but if not, okay. I just toss it in the trash. Okay. Um, it does seem interesting because after a while you do start to notice that the Altoid tin is getting hot and that the little, the little lip that controls it, uh, kind of melts shut. It actually gets very difficult to open. Hmm. Can I store it in my freezer? Oh, you absolutely can. That's That seems to stop it. So, yeah. Franklin's just got this Altoid tin in the freezer. And yeah, maybe you don't... You try not to think about it. Hayden, how are you doing, man? We didn't get a lot of time with you. I'm putting my two weeks in and starting drinking. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I know I saw that huge demon in the fire. I'm not crazy. Yeah, that makes sense. Do you do you ever tell people about this? Like this thing you saw? 
I, I don't think anybody I know, but I'm going to start going online on like conspiracy forums, Phenomenex, and I'm going to post about it. Oh, I like that. Um, yeah, go ahead and do some sort of search role in that vein. Okay. I don't know. You why. had a library use, but I can't imagine you do. Uh, you can use the same character sheet. Uh, okay, okay. Same sheet, then that's a pass regular. Okay. There does appear to be mention of this shape you saw and ancient carvings of these things. Um, in fact, it has been cited before, uh, roughly in kind of uh, in a, in Wisconsin actually, before it's been seen years and years ago, and it set a whole bunch of fires and burned the ever loving shit out of a lake, and people don't really know what to call it but whatever it takes care of like it burns it to the ground and it's gone is kind of the impression you're doing so your character could actually get a uh, five percent unnatural if we were continuing of yeah so uh, this is a no watching the history thing. channel <laughs> yeah you might might dig further and jackson a uh, helicopter makes it out What's the, the next day look like? Uh, I'm uh, probably, um, I mean, I'm sure we have some compassionate leave since we lost more than half of our team. Yes, for sure. So I'll probably, you know, um, spend the first day just like sitting on the couch, looking at nothing, eating mayonnaise out of a jar with a spoon. Mm -hmm. But after a couple of days, I'm going to go out to these hills and look through the burnt wreckage of this fire. You know, I know I saw these blue things before I, you know, got messed up by whatever that meth head was cooking or whatever made me yeah. see that. I think I saw something, but I want to look at, you know, there's going to be some animal remains. There's going to be all. I'm just, yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to document that site because that was an unusual fire, and I didn't like it. Yeah, and you've been like it's very easy for you to find these places. Uh, they've dredged up the plane at some point in there, but on the shore you do find the little shards of that stone tablet that Rory had been cooking. And they're warm to the touch still as you're holding. Not enough to burn you, but they're still they're giving off a heat to them. Yeah. But I um, mean, do they shared. do they fit do they fit together? Is it like a jigsaw puzzle? Uh, yeah, you could you could spend some time putting it together and it, it really is just a, a matter of time. Um and it does appear to be some language I doubt you speak. Uh you'd have to send out to get it translated. But yeah, if, it's a, it, there's words on it and uh, this symbol of kind of a, a sun shining out, but obviously you've seen parts of it and you're, you don't think those are sun rays. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to be showing that to anybody. Might, yeah. I might dig a hole and bury them. I like it. Yeah, just uh, one one in the freezer, one in the the hole out in the backyard, and uh, I think that's where we'll leave it today. As Jackson is pouring dirt on top of this hole in the yard of warm stone shards. Cool or hot <laughs> or hot. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so. Yes. Kathuga, so, we know him. yes, Kathuga, um, a fire sort of entity. Um, historically, it's been used to cleanse out uh, other beings, kind of to, to kick them out. That is what Rory was going for. He had this tablet that could, if you left it on heat, would bring Kathuga right to you with the hundreds of fire vampires that come with it just taking everything out his plan Rory's plan was just get rid of himself this 
this was a cleansing, take him out. He has been infected with iHort spiders, basically. So Tristan's power role to kind of overcome their influence is a very good thing because, uh, yeah, you would you did lose another friend later as he split into these things and they go out and burrow into more people and spread out and have terrible dream nightmares. So yes, uh, the reason it is called uh, controlled burn is that is what he was attempting to do to himself. He could have just jumped into a fiery furnace or something. You, I think uh, it might not be enough for those spiders as kind of the concern wow. he had. He wants something, uh, he wants the heavy duty stuff as it were. Right, and he got infected by them because he was already up to things he shouldn't have been up to. So he had almost certainly ac access to other I other mad ideas. He's probably an investigator from another game that uh, had a very uh, bad time. Thought that he could get away with something. I was really cool. It was a lot of fun. I'm glad our players so included. Cool. Oh, go Sorry. ahead. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, what was up with the couple? Uh, they were just dummies at the the spot. No, uh, I'm sure, they were behind it. <laughs> <laughs> they were sometimes, a source of information. Sometimes there's just idiots. It's too funny. Our players included Dakota Davis, Max Meltzer, Thomas Bailey, David Gasway, and myself with Nathan Decker as the keeper of arcane lore. We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description, or you can use Super Thanks uh, by hitting the button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.